This is Mike Leach, uh, head football coach at Mississippi State, and you're listening to SGPN. Let it run. Welcome everyone to the Sports Gambling Podcast. I'm Sean Stacking the Money Green with my partner in picks, Ryan. Real Money Kramer. What's happening, Kramer? Dog. Mmm. Half mast. We don't have a pirate flag, unfortunately. Yes. Uh, or it would be at half mast. Uh, joining us here, talk college football uh, memories with of Coach Leach. We're doing a tribute here. Colby Dant, aka the Dantabase. What's happening, Colby? Well, shitty day knowing the news, but I mean, uh, there's still light at the end of the tunnel. I think it's, I think people are finding out the impact that, uh, that, that coach Leach had on on the game of football, not just college, high school pro. uh, Yeah, no, it's, it's crazy. I mean, obviously him and mommy and we we've had, uh, we've had them on the show a number of times. I mean, Mike Leach was on our show like six times. Uh, we included links. If you go to the episode description, we're going to be a tribute post as well on the website. So you can catch up on the old episodes. If you miss those. Um, yeah. I mean, he had a huge impact on the NFL, the college world. Like everyone kind of took towards that air raid uh, system and uh, you know, it's really cool that legacy. And then him as a guy is like a whole other legacy. There, there's just watching all these memorial tributes to him. It's, it's just so many people saying what a cool guy he was, you know, these random conversations he would just have for hours on end with people. Uh, and you know, a very fortunate, I think us and, you know, personally, I feel fortunate to been able to have these great uh, conversations with. Him. Yeah, no. And I think, I think that's part of what makes him so, so cool is, uh, you know, how we fell into it with him is that, you know, we just got hit up basically by the, the SID of Washington state. Shout out to bill Stevens. Um, yeah, yeah. And Colby wrote a, uh, a post <laughs> ranking the uh, best coaches in college football. Mike Leach made the number one rank because of what he had done of, of bringing these small schools that didn't have a history of winning and winning a ton of games. Uh, he hit them up. He's like, Hey, coach Leach loves to talk, get him on the show. Leach uh, instantly. We had a good rapport with him, invited us out there. And you know, it was a cool annual semi-annual tradition of having him on the show, talking about everything, but football. And uh, you know, it, it's, it was just awesome. I mean, the joke seems to be that we may, we weren't as special as we thought we were. <laughs> well, Every, it's crazy. Everyone like, seemed to I, have his I, phone. I number. said, I said to Colby at some point, how many like <laughs> conversations had this guy had? Like he is always on the phone. Oh, like so many people had great stories of, you know, talking to him all night about the most random stuff. And uh, yeah, it, it's, it's crazy how many people he touched via the game of football, but also just you know, um, in his, in his life as a guy, it's, it's really incredible to have this many people in in a weird way. I don't even know what the the word is, but you just hear uh, so many people describing, Oh, like you, you, you imagine when you die, you would hope you leave this many great stories that people can share about you. And I'm sure, you know, leech, I, as much as he's probably like annoyed that people are spending his time (laughs) fawning all over him. I do think he enjoys like the stories. He was a great storyteller and he was a great listener too. I I remember, you know, one of the times we went to set up an interview, most everything I did with him, (laughs) uh, like contact wise was via text. Are you you mean the PR team? I was the I was back <laughs> back in my PR days at what SGPN. Back in your PR days, still am, still am, yeah. right? Uh, but uh, you know, I remember like one of the days he had to like change the day. I don't remember if it was just, uh, but he had texted me that he needed to change the hours, and I I did not receive that text because I was walking my dog in Venice, and then I guess he just said I'm going to call you to tell you <laughs> that that I can't make the interview time. Uh, that we were supposed to do. I want to say it was calling me like a day ahead of time. And uh, you know, I pick up the phone and, and I'm just like, Oh, I'm so sorry. I missed it because this is a guy. So, you know, f- this is a big deal for us. You know, like uh, this is a football coach, you know, a lot of people probably try and interview him 
and he's asking, and I'm like, I'm so sorry. He's like, uh, I, I wasn't paying attention and I was walking my dog and, and then he starts going on about at first he asked what kind of dog that I have oh, yeah. <laughs> and, and he loved animal yeah. facts. Yeah. And then uh, I started dog. talking about Venice beach, which led to like talking about homelessness and a lot of the homeless uh, <laughs> population in Venice. And then how he lived, uh, went to Pepperdine, lived in Canoga park of Lo- uh, uh, you know, in the Valley of Los Angeles. And then about shark attacks because there had been a recent shark attack I think in Malibu so he was talking about great white shark attack and I'm sitting there like wait this is a guy that's a millionaire that's that's you know I'm sure anyone would love to be able to talk to mm. and he's calling me I uh, you know to tell me that he can't do an interview and I'm thinking well wait you you're just talking to me for like 45 minutes as I'm walking around <laughs> Venice he's doing the interview <laughs> <laughs> you wow. know like uh, I mean he did invite a small unknown independent podcast company yes. to Pullman based on what we think now to be that he actually read this article, mm-hmm. hit up Billy Steve, you know, as yeah. you said, reached out and they, they had us up there. No different. I mean, we were literally like, it was like side by side with the guys from the PAC 12 network and uh, Yogi, I think is his Yogi name. Yogi Roth. Roth. There, yeah. there was yeah. a fun interaction where we had, where we, you know, Friday night we're down on the field. We're watching practice. Super cool. Just kind of to be in that atmosphere, got some one-on-one time with coach Leach, but uh, he just had, uh, had a quick, like, you know, media guy chat with Yogi uh, game day. We see him up in the press area and he, he I, I, I don't know if that was the exact timeline, but he's like, Hey, whatever you coach Leach loves you guys. <laughs> yeah. And so for the, for the idea that like, I guess the, the recycled story that everyone's telling, like he seemed to uh, build one-on-one relationships with everyone. He was no, never bigger it, than that. And I can tell you, and I, Sean, I know you've worked on a lot of stuff, but like, yeah, I I've, I've met tons of celebrities, whether it was through sports or through entertainment out here. And most of the time they don't ask you really about how your day is going and about how, how, and, and Mike Leach was like, I didn't even want to, I felt like he was just always trying to talk to us, you know, he, anything non football related. Uh, I think that's, I mean, oh, yeah. our, you know, the theory that we had in house on why he liked us is we were willing to not talk about football. <laughs> he generally was not really interested in talking about football. It was, uh, it was the everything else. So yeah, I mean, I, I don't know, like as, as an up and coming uh, podcast, when, when a, when a division one coach is basically like, Hey, yeah, let's do this. And then on top of that gets hired into the sec yeah. and do, like continues to take Colby's phone calls. Yeah. Yeah. Man. Where, I mean, it's like, yeah. W- like I'm sure so many others have had this experience, but like we did an interview as he walked through that town, he stays in, in, <laughs> in, in Key, Key West. West. <laughs> yeah. And he's then saying he, hi to the, the local uh, barkeep. He's you know, yeah. <laughs> and he's like, Oh, that guy on the boat he lives on a boat. He used to kick for Georgia. <laughs> No, and and to to Ryan's point too, like him kind of giving us a blessing was really oh. huge for our show. I mean, it, I think it gave us confidence. Oh, I, uh, I piggybacked that on, on. No, no, even yeah. when we send out emails of like trying to get bigger name guests, you know, Mike Leach is always included in there, and it was, um, you know, it was a real honor to to be able to interview him. And uh, I, yeah, we're very fortunate. And as a get it get it the fuck done business. It was real cool when we had Hal Mummy on, and they talked about how back, way back in the day, and, and everyone's learning about it now. But w- Kentucky Wesleyan was that, or uh, Iowa, Iowa Wesleyan? He, yeah. he literally was also the the sports reporter. Wrote that, wrote the game, tough. wrote the game recaps anonymously. He didn't the- want to be connected to it, so no one was covering the <laughs> Iowa <laughs> Wesleyan game. So he was writing them anonymously to put in the Des Moines Register. How bad do just you want? To, it? Just to get some press. <laughs> how bad do you want it? Well, that. that that's what I mean. So it doesn't surprise me in a way. It does surprise me, you know, yes, in general, but it doesn't surprise me in a way when you learn that, you know, what he's gone through to get to that level as a guy that, that did not play college football, which is rare from a coaching standpoint, but he, he when the guy went to Finland to coach, he coached the, yeah. the Pori bears in Finland, you anywhere, I mean? <laughs> anytime sign him up. Um, and yeah, uh, chase is checking in in the YouTube chat. I talked about it with Ryan. I think we got to keep the because in our Discord we have a Mike Leach bot. Is the mo- is we well? It's bigger than that. Like the bot that controls all things in our Discord yeah. channel is Coach Leach, and so he I, welcomes I, you. Yeah, I think we definitely got to keep that there because his spirit I think is similar to the spirit we got here with this company. Like we're open to um, you know bringing on a bunch of different kinds of people and. And you know, just doing whatever you gotta do to get the job done. So um, we haven't had to adjust our system; it works everywhere. <laughs> yeah, it, it's great for small, scrappy schools like us. 
And uh, yeah, we pulled a bunch of clips. We're just going to play them, comment on some from our show, some from other shows. Uh, again, like check out the links in the episode description because we're going to put those for the previous uh, interviews he had. Definitely worth a re listen. Yeah. So uh, if you're on YouTube, they should be there already. I have links to Spotify and. Apple doesn't always go back far enough. So I, links to Spotify links to YouTube uh, episodes. And then on top of that, what I'll, what we'll do we have, like Sean said, we'll have a post on the website and I'll, I'll continue to add in like uh, the tangential interviews we did with guys like Hal mummy and things like that uh, as we can pull them out. Um, and apologies. I'm going to, I'm going to cover our faces to show some of these clips. So, all right. Yeah. And uh, youtube.com slash sports gambling podcast. If you want to watch some of the videos as well, cause uh, they're, they're great as well. This first one we got, um, this is us trying to go viral and it worked. We, we got, we're like, oh, we got to talk about the mascot when he became part of the sec, get his take on mascots, battling it out each other. And it, it got picked up by a lot of places. I, so yeah, not thanks again for co to coach Leach wasn't the original concept, but I believe we were the first ones to get him to talk about the sec mascot. So yeah. we'll take a little bit of credit for that. All right, let me figure this out. Sorry. Hold on slight. All right. Boom. Oh my goodness. And the best part about this is to see uh this was in uh, for time. I believe this was 20, a 2019. Whenever, when did he get hired Colby 2019? Uh, yeah. Cause 2020 cause COVID was, that was his first game when he broke the sec passing record in game one, took yeah. one game, so, took uh, one game to get it done. Oh, so it's still, yeah. So th this is what the studio looked like only, only two years ago, guys. So <laughs> shout out Kramer's to corner of Kramer's garage. Uh, Coach Leach, I've been seeing you uh, posing with the bulldog. I know. Uh, you know, now you're Mississippi State Bulldog. How does your bulldog match up with the rest of the SEC mascot? Seems like it could have its hands full. You're going up against tigers, an elephant, a gator. I, I think I got you over the razor back, but it seems like the the bulldog ha has his hands full. How how would you rank the bulldog and the SEC mascots in general? Well, I think the mascots are outstanding. First of all, you have a tiger, which that's a hard one to argue with. <laughs> However, a pack of bulldogs, you know, we we probably have more than one. There'd be a number of them, and tigers are solo. <laughs> Dog, okay. An elephant's afraid of a mouse, and we're a bulldog, so I'm going to give the bulldog the benefit of the doubt. I like it. Um, yes, yes. Gators hate dog. Now, gators hate dogs, and I know this for a fact. They they seem pretty ambivalent about people, but and I don't know if it's because the dog's wiggly or something. Because I don't think it's a food source. It's more hatred. They just hate dogs. So. But we've got a number of dogs, and gators obviously hate dogs. We've got to go with the bulldog. Yep. Um, you know, uh, gamecocks. You know, he'll have his razor sharp, be ready to claw, do all that stuff. Got to go with the bulldog again. Uh, uh, George, I'm going to say, copied our bulldog. So you got to go with our bulldog. Got to go with the original um, bulldog. Dog. Commodore, Auburn, <laughs> uh, Auburn. Although it'd be better to fight the the eagle than the the bulldog or than the tiger, probably. We already covered that. <laughs> Let's see. We got the Commodore. Now you might have to dodge some cannon fire. <laughs> he does have a sword, so you got to keep your head on a swivel. But again, a bunch of bulldogs. Uh, you know, you know, kind of like those wild dogs of Africa. <laughs> and then uh, let's see the wildcat. Now wildcats are fierce. There's no question about it. Again, I mean, and um, just as uh, as serious as I could be, got to go with the bulldog. Uh, <laughs> who am I leaving out? Oh, Ole Miss, the rebels. Well, uh, I got or, or, well, they're, they're the bears. What are what is Ole Miss? Now, yeah, I think they're uh, the Bears now, but they were the Rebels. I, I'm I'm confused myself. Uh, okay, so the Bears. Um, well, uh, you just uh, well, the dogs left to chase them until we tree the bear, <laughs> and then uh, Razorbacks. Uh, you know, uh, you, you know, oftentimes you use dogs to hunt Razorbacks. I've got to go with the dogs. Uh, you got a different dog uh, over at A and M. Yeah, like a lassie. Yeah, dog. but we get we yeah, but we have a bulldog. So there you <laughs> yeah. have that. 
It's a junkyard dog. Then, He's uh, going to take care of him. Uh, the Missouri Tiger. I, I didn't realize it until you walked me through all this. Three Tigers in the SEC. <laughs> well, I, that's what makes it a tough conference. Yeah. <laughs> uh, three Tigers. Think about that as a mess. Oh, oh, that's great. And, and his, uh, you know, Leach underrated as far as comedic timing, like his pauses. Yeah. Uh, you know, even his little line about three tigers. That's why it's an underrated conference. Um, truly. That was really great. Uh, another clip we got here. This one, I, I don't know why this one just cracked me the hell up and I almost missed it like live. And then I think Colby kept quoting it, but uh, last time we had him on, He's telling the story about a parrot. Uh, it was like his brother-in-law. I, I don't know. He'll tell it, but him doing an impression <laughs> of a bird at the end is just—it's oh, truly had amazing. me in tears, man. My uh, brother had a bird or a, a parrot, one of those green ones, <laughs> and the parrot, uh, the parrot uh, 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 was, you know, they live, grew up in a bar or whatever, you know, was owned by these bar owners. So the parrot swore all the time. And then, um, and the parrot liked my brother better than his wife. And, um, this parrot used to wander around the house every morning. His wife thought the parrot was possessed and, uh, cause the parrot would talk in a real creepy parrot voice, you know, and, and, and her name was Lisa. Lisa, Lisa, can the little bird come in? Let the little bird in. Uh, brother, oh man, uh, it's just great. It's just uh, that last parrot. part of like, let the little bird come in, Lisa. <laughs> let the little bird come uh, in. Yeah, I mean, again, <laughs> he's, he's the, just the best. He's uh, just like, that's gold, man. Uh, this, I mean, yeah. in particular, this, and you know, the I, I'm so glad we got this last episode in with him because the the one we did in the summer I did think was our was our best one. He he really had a ton of funny lines and. I think even Tex Colby said afterwards and said how much he he had fun doing the interview, which is so cool. Um, and uh, this one, Colby had a, a question prepared about the about the hot dog eating <laughs> contest, and it took a it took a real funny turn. Down sixty three hot dogs in a food eating. Let me start again. Joey Chestnut down 63 hot dogs in a food eating contest and, and won. He did that in 10 minutes. Does that make him an athlete? A and also what food would you choose for eating in a in a contest like that? Well, I don't think I'd be in a contest like that. Um, <laughs> that is a remarkable, remarkable, remarkable <laughs> feat. I, I mean, I don't know how the guy does it and I would like some uh, doctor to explain how this is possible because I have a hard time figuring that out. Um, you know, I mean, it's almost like the guy's part boat constrictor. And then, um, but uh, that was boy, me snorting. Matter, I mean, how in the world do you do that? And then, you know, it's one thing to get it all in, but getting it all out, that's got to be kind of a, you know, they could have a contest in that too. I don't know. But, uh, I don't know if they, I don't know if they'd have it at Coney Island or at least uh, uh, might be tough to put it up on stage. Uh, oh, that was gold. Good. gold. Uh, I realized uh, looking at our list, we didn't have one of him talking about Bigfoot. I just added one in okay. to the doc Kramer. Um, but we had a number of good Bigfoot conversations about, you know, would Bigfoot travel with him uh, when he moved to Mississippi state? Uh, what position would Bigfoot play? This one's pretty fun. He always liked bringing up uh, the Jack Link's jerky commercials. I feel like we talked about it every time <laughs> and he really, uh, he, he loved crowbar and it in, but like we, this one I think was around the time when they started allowing uh, players to get played and we threw out the hypothetical of like, Hey, what if, what if Bigfoot played in college football? What would his, you know, what kind of NIL endorsements would he get? I think would look to partner. Yeah, I mean, and honestly, like there to, to Sean's point, like he did have some infatuation with the <laughs> the fact that Jack Links was just ripping off Bigfoot without yeah. without, without paying him pay at all. all. All right, here we go. What brands do you think would look to partner up <laughs> with the Sasquatch? That jerky company, I yeah. think uh, yep. clearly Lay they up. would owe they owe him they owe him some money for that. <laughs> and then that part of the country loves IPAs, which uh, I'm not big into that, but. Uh, 
uh, Sasquatch would make a great IPA representative, oh, I yeah. think. <laughs> Him and Jordan and, and Sierra I, I, Nevada I, I, in the wilderness? <laughs> I can see that. Some form of camping would be good because I think uh, Bigfoot um, camps a lot. And then also, well, I could see kind of a, a spokesperson for nude sunbathing, oh. you know, <laughs> um, because uh, in fairness, he's done it for years, you know, and then... Uh, Imagine the the pile of money that we'd get if all of a sudden uh, he decided to shave his beard. I think Sasquatch brings a lot. Like, you know, I could see him having kind of a bidding war between him and the Artesians. (laughs) And, you know, I certainly would rather have Sasquatch as a beer representative over the Artesians, you see. (laughs) Yeah, definitely. um, Well, I think you were on to something with the shaving. He's yeah. known as Grooming. a hairy guy. Grooming. Well, because I- remember when Joe Namath had the leg commercial <laughs> where he says, if you can shave my legs or whatever, and then, I mean, Sasquatch would bury that if he had oh. shaved his legs. Yeah, you or, know? or Sasquatch get a Manscaped endorsement. They would. Oh. Uh, you know, I, that, that's hilarious where he's talking about. I'm I, I'm not, I'm not into the IPAs. Did, I shared a tweet with you earlier about, oh, yes. about him with uh, he's the kind of guy who would drink Tito's with unsweet tea yes. because it didn't taste good. <laughs> thus preventing him from having too many <laughs> truly a next level thinker. Oh man. I, I, mean, I, uh, I worked with a graduate of Washington state for a little while. And when we went up to it became like this bonding moment for us at work. Uh, she was a relatively new em- employee and I was going up to see coach Leach and wazoo. And she told this great story about how they were tailgating a couple seasons back and he just showed up. He was just <laughs> wandering around the tailgate <laughs> saying what's up to people, which reminded me, I don't have the clip pulled, but do you remember the brawl in the bowl game? Yeah. Oh, uh, the miss the, the, I got Mississippi it. State game. Oh, you yeah. have the, the yeah. clip of him just yeah. hanging Tulsa out. And Mississippi State, <laughs> He's think, hanging yeah. out in the stands, taking pictures <laughs> with fans while his team's in a war. I'll so I'll add All it right. to the doc, right? We'll get it to the end. Just yeah. don't, uh, yeah. Uh, we'll put it. Uh, yeah, I'll add it. Um, but just don't don't play the audio. But how about some how about even like the Heisman this year? What three three of the five Heisman contestants are, come from Mike Leach's system? Yeah, I don't know if you crazy. guys knew that, uh, I, I, I just think well, the guy leaves such a legacy. His coaching tree is unbelievable. Do you have that, Ryan? Or yeah, we, why don't we just play it now? The brawl thing is great. He's like, it's after. Wasn't it after their bowl game a couple years ago? I think it was the the Tulsa Mississippi State game. I believe, if memory serves me correct. I don't know if I can make this big enough. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, um, you'll just have to look it up. But yeah, we'll 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 put it in the <laughs> in the episode notes. I I can tell you one thing was funny is one of the times I came, I was just randomly walking my dog and I come home and my wife, but at the time was just my girlfriend was reading, mm. you know, my, my wife's not even from here and uh, America that is. And she was reading, <laughs> she was reading Geronimo, the yeah. Mike Leach book that he did. Oh yeah. So I took a photo. I sent it to coach Leach. He wrote back about an hour later saying that's marriage material. You got, you got to <laughs> marry her. Hey coach, look what I did. I married her. Yeah, so you're married. there we and, go. And coach. you took her to a Nebraska game on the way to the wedding. <laughs> that's uh, true. That's true. true. American hero. <laughs> Colby Dan. His, All right. his book. Uh, I did read the Geronimo book. It's really good. Or you, Oklahoma. Oh, and, sorry. and this yeah. is a, uh, this is our next clip. We got, uh, this is, I had never heard this story about how he got his, uh, how he got one of his kickers at Texas tech. This is great. I I mean and all th- again this just kind of highlights the uh, thinking outside <laughs> the box like who like <laughs> can you imagine a regular football coach d- doing something like no, this No 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 <laughs> He needed a kicker he didn't go to Florida or Oklahoma he went to the stands Matt Williams <laughs> Matt Williams was just a fan at a tech game <laughs> until this moment he volunteered in a promotional contest if he could kick a field goal he'd win free rent Okay, Matt. Whenever you're ready, give it a shot. In sneakers, he takes one step and just puts it right down the center of uh, the goalpost. I mean, that's pressure. I figure I figured it'd be easier to kick extra points after that. Leach sent an equipment manager <laughs> to catch the contest winner. Williams joined the team and hasn't missed an extra point since. <laughs> what a great story. <laughs> he needed a kicker. He didn't go to Florida. Or I mean, it, it's, it's, uh, 
It's funny because he was right. Yeah, no, I mean, it's 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 right up in the model with, uh, you know, keep it simple, stupid. And he was he was great at that stuff. And kind of brings us to our next topic. He was a huge advocate. Him and Colby definitely oh, bonded over goodness. the idea of expanding the college football playoff. Now, unfortunately, Coach Leach won't be here to see when it gets to twelve teams. He, I know he always wanted more, but. Uh, yeah, we talked about it to him all the time where it's like, yeah, why can we not have a bigger college football playoff? It seems so obvious. And now now they've actually figured it out. It's uh and, and Sean, I there's been not to reference the chat too much, but there have been a couple uh people wondering if the coleslaw shirt is available in the merch store. <laughs> which oh, of course get on yeah. that. which of course the coleslaw shirt, uh, shout out to Cousin Mush for for getting it done. But uh it, you know, Coach Leach really was the one that gave me the uh Gave gave me the courage <laughs> to put to slap the, that coleslaw between those two it, slices it, of bread. Yeah, if you missed the story, we were invited to the when we were in the press box at the Washington State game. Uh, Kramer was on a no meat cleanse and actually ate a coleslaw <laughs> sandwich. <laughs> Uh, Which the best part of the, that weekend was when we went to this burger place and I ordered like <laughs> <laughs> there's these beautiful like it's the gimmick is it's like an ice cream scooper of meat and they throw it on. And, Looks like a delicious burger. They cook, it, they cook it like right in front of you. Right in front yeah, of you. Yeah. And I order the fucking chickpea burger, and the guy just looks at me. <laughs> One reaches, pussy burger re reaches to the back <laughs> of the, fr confused. the freezer. Just oh man, yeah. I mean, sh shout out to. Uh, I mean, again. Hold on, but with the playoff talk, you know the un the unfortunate thing. Obviously, it's unfortunate just because Mike Leach is a is a really good dude. Uh, but I really believe we we've seen this he was taking the next step at Mississippi state. And I, I believe they would have been in this playoff down the stretch here. I, yeah. I don't think we got a fair shake of him fully in the sec, unfortunately, because I you, normally it's year five. I feel like you go look at what he, at wazoo year five was the big year. He made that big jump. This was only year three and we had the COVID year. So I don't know. Let's have him talk about the playoff though, because I, me and him always saw eye to eye on this. This might last. This was a this was a couple minutes though. Oh, that's all right. Yeah. That's okay. ten well, minutes. We no, 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 no. But I, I think I it stops at four. But oh, yeah, we'll, we'll, yeah. I'll, I'll, I, uh, I'll I think sixty four teams. But I think <laughs> which the by sixteen? If you had sixteen teams, then I think we could. Could which, by the way, before we let it go all the way, I mean, I do remember the moment when we had this conversation on our show with Coach Leach and. That when Colby realized that he agreed with him, <laughs> it, it was, I mean, it was like the moment <laughs> that the, the stripper asked you to go to the back or something. It was it's, it's just logical. Oh, it's a sh shame on us for having logic. Settle a whole lot of these <laughs> issues, you know, it doesn't matter what the East coast or Los Angeles or anybody in between things. All of a sudden there's 16 teams. Oh geez. Number 16 beat number four. Well, screw number four. Number four is out. You see, cause number 16 got them. You know, I mean that pretty well solve all of it, wouldn't it? And then thirty two, you could easily do thirty two, and then, um, uh, and then the, the you know the most stunning thing, and I give this lecture probably three times every year, but um, then college football says they scratch their head and they give a really befuddled, mixed up look, and they get a really screwy expression on their face, like, well, how can that possibly be? <laughs> I mean, how can we do that? I mean, how is it possible that you could actually have a playoff format in college football? Well, gee, I don't know. Let's start with uh, we, we can go down to the local city park, and I'll bet you somebody that handles youth football can tell you how to do something <laughs> like that. Well, that's too low of a scale. Let's move it up a little bit. Okay. How about high school from a major state? Let's say Texas, Florida, or California. Let's see how they do it. Okay, let's see. These guys... You know, they win a certain number of games. They have a qualification. <laughs> okay, now, boom, they're in the playoffs. But they don't have just two or four teams or something. Hell no, because they want everybody to have fun and enjoy this playoff system. <laughs> so they have 16 or 32 or 64 or something like that. Okay, so then they play each other, and everybody's on the edge of their seat going to wait and see if <laughs> this team's going to beat that team or going to beat the other team. And so then, <clears throat> uh, in the end, there's occasionally a debate. If only this team hadn't lost to that team in this round, then this team could have won the whole thing, and that's perhaps true. But the thing that is indisputable is that at the end of the gauntlet, this team came out on uh, number one, and there's no debate whatsoever who state champion. Then you can go to Division Three. Let's see, how do they do it? 
oh, they do it the exact same way. <laughs> okay, now the suspense the sarcasm is so good. Get thick. Because, you know, Division Two might do it differently. No, in fact, they don't. <laughs> they do it exactly, exactly, boys and girls, like Division Three does. And then now they've changed the initials because in this era of political correctness, they love to change initials and make it proper to say things one way instead of another. And I forget what the initials is. But then they go to one double A. Okay, at one double A. How do they do it? One double A. One double A. I mean, because that's getting closer to us and we're really sophisticated because we're major, major one A. How do they do it in one double A? You know what? They have a playoff for it, Matt. And they play it and they figure it out. And, and, and then, um, okay, 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 well, that's, they're all below us. Okay, what about above us, the NFL? And everybody, you know, that just makes you feel good to roll those initials off here. It's like Huckleberry Finn said, some days I just have to swear to get a good taste in my mouth. Okay, so then NFL. Now that makes my mouth feel good because that's the best and they're the top. Let's see here. How do they figure out their champion? <clears throat> well, they, in fact, organize a playoff system. <laughs> and how many teams are in there? A hell of a lot more than four. <laughs> and then they sort it all out, and then <clears throat> they, <clears throat> they have one battle after the next. And at the end, guess what? They sort out a champion, and it's called the Super Bowl. And there, there's not interest diminished because people are captivated by the playoffs. And the biggest sporting event every year in the history of the world is the Super Bowl. <laughs> okay, any questions? <laughs> that was right. great. That's, uh, I mean. I mean, come on. I it, know. It's just. Also, like a really good, well, well put together argument. I mean, it, you could see how he would have been a successful lawyer. <laughs> A hundred percent, man. A hundred percent, and uh, it's a shame, man. I'm bummed out. He's not going to see it for twelve, even. I thought I really thought Mississippi State would have a shot to get in there too. I really think think they would have been in there. Oh man, it's tough. This is a, this is a tough day because uh, that's. Can we talk about that for a second? Can we talk about how the fact that like everyone's so vanilla in in coaching these days? Yeah, I honestly, whether People it's college are- or whether it's pro, there's no one with like. Call me crazy, but like gr- growing up, we had the Glanvilles or the Bum Phillips or or, or Buddy Ryan, and, and and Leach is like the last one of those. And I don't know that we have any more like personalities it, out there. You could also, I mean, you can almost make a more macro comment about just leaders in general. Like, look <laughs> at the leaders of today's day compared to you know what we're remembering. Uh, there, there's a lot of that that personal charisma, right? You remember being in the room with whoever that is. And I think that's that like with Leach that you 100% you remember because something unique probably happened to you. Well, you know what it was? It was, he wasn't afraid to, to speak on what he believed in because that's who he was. And and I feel like nowadays you just get all these people that will say that whatever's supposed to be the, 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 the correct answer instead of what they believe. And it's, it's, I don't think it's good for the sport. I don't think it's good for the world. I think it's, uh, he was a breath of fresh air in that shit, man. Like I don't know. That's what I think everyone is seeing, seeing all the shit going on on Twitter or whatever. I think people are captivated by that. Well, I said this to you guys, I, I, I seriously, like do, does this kind of response happen for any other collegiate coach? No, I mean, coach, I, yeah, I think it's, they're it's like strange. honored, but uh, the personal stuff I think is what separates Mike Leach and the, the stories the, and how they're all really oh. different, but they all just sound like a non football people can relate. Yeah, yeah. I, but I think both. I think from a football standpoint, there hasn't been as big as an, uh, an impact on the game of football. Uh, I saw m- something about Bill Walsh, how yeah. he can't be inducted into the college football hall of fame as a head coach because he hasn't coached like sixty percent of his games as a head coach or some crazy. Hasn't role won sixty like percent. He's won fifty nine point six or yeah. something. I saw that same thing. That's it. That feels like may, maybe your museum doesn't matter if you're not gonna. <laughs> have. Yeah, you don't have Mike. Leach well, we were that. talking about this like impactful like offensive or defensive systems in the history of football. It's right up there. Certainly. Uh, his his take on weddings again, like everything. He's just yeah. He's just very funny and uh, great at riffing and <laughs> he just wind him up and he goes. It's, it's pretty awesome. Yeah. I mean, it's this, it's honestly, it's like um, he could, I think the, the fact that he can, like he cared to relate to the media too. Like the, so the media obviously uh, likes him. Uh, and I that, mean, I saw so many great stories though of, of, of people in the media that maybe, you know, were, were getting their first start just like when we were 
and oh, a similar thing where and, they're like, hey, come hang out with yeah, me. Yeah, most a day. coaches are giving him like, get out of here. I don't know you. Leach always he never put the next man above the next. Yeah, I don't I think, think we have the clip pulled, but the story of him. Uh, bringing the homeless man onto out 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 of the practice field just to because he was hanging outside the practice facility. Yeah, why not bring him in? The women lose their mind. Your fiance is going to lose her mind. Your mother-in-law is going to lose her mind. Your mom is going to lose her mind. Several of your sisters and uh, female relatives are going to lose their mind. And um, and they're going to they're going to barrage you with constant questions. What should we wear? And then, uh, which of course my answer was, I don't care. <laughs> and then, uh, what color should the invitations be? I don't care. Uh, what should we have for dessert? I don't care. Should we seek this this way or th that that way? I don't care. And, but see, I don't care is not satisfactory at all. And you're going to get caught in a catch-22, and I'm certain that you already have. And that catch-22 is. Well, I want you to be a part of this too. Uh, so, what color invitations? Um, all right, the blue ones. Well, I kind of like uh, I kind of like the tan ones. Okay, the tan ones then. Oh, you're just saying that because uh, 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 you want this over. With. You're not even thinking about it, which is of course true. Uh, what do you want for dessert? I was thinking of strawberry shortcake. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, strawberry shortcake would be good. Well, what about the blueberry pie? Well, I like the blueberry pie. We could have the blueberry pie. Well, I thought you said you wanted the strawberry shortcake, and it's just going to go back and forth, and they're going to play keep away from you until uh, after you're married. There's no answer you can give that is going to be satisfactory or correct. And if you successfully uh, please a few of them, the others will still be, oh, well, I just don't feel like he's that interested. Yeah, okay, so, so you need to work late. Uh, go in the back room and read a lot of books. Uh, take the groomsmen out so you make sure that they march in just right and they know exactly, you know, these swell outfits that you picked out or whatever, however you're doing it. Um, and in the end, you'll wish you eloped. Uh, you need to find um, excuses uh, that they'll buy uh, to be as far out of harm's way as you possibly can. <laughs> God bless that man. So God good. bless that man. So funny. Oh man. So what's funny is he can get away with that. Like, I would imagine a woman might even find that that funny. Oh yeah. Yeah. If you have a sense of humor, I mean, if you've been married, I think you relate a lot to that. Or if you're involved in planning a wedding, uh, especially as the guy side, you're like, yeah, you're in that double <laughs> and that thing where you go, you don't, you want to show interest, but you don't want to say you don't care, but you want to defer to what they want. You want to support their decision. Yeah, it's a real, it's a real slippery slope. Great advice as always from Coach Leach. He he also sees like through pointless stuff. Um, I hadn't heard this one or seen this one. This is great, uh, Mike Leach on like what a captain does and what it means. And basically, as he says, he figured out it's just about the coin toss. Yeah, I mean. Honestly, like just his his approach to break apart anything that was silly. Yeah. Um, but y you really and, and pretended to be complex. Yeah. What was that called? I was gonna say like when he started out and they were throwing the ball that many times, like he was like the joke. What but did he What did he say to Trent? What was the uh, Tim uh, Tim Couch quote that uh, when when they recruited him? He said, "What? Come here and throw the ball oh, more than anyone's said, ever do he, it." He said, yeah. "You're going to be the starting quarterback, and we're going to throw, throw the ball, ball 50 times a game." Tim Couch is super yeah. excited. <laughs> well, when he was at Iowa Wesley, and I, I, I mean, I think it was Mummy that told us this that they were like laughed out of meetings. Like they, they, I don't think people realized no one passed the ball. Yeah. Only Mouse Davis, like him and Mouse Davis, coming well, up at the yeah, same the time. The Chargers yeah. were like this revolutionary team back in the NFL. And, yeah, and yeah. Still Eric Coriel. Yeah. So, yeah, this was his again, like Sean said, his take on the. Uh, the team captain and coin toss. So then I thought, well, you know, all the guy really does is the coin toss. And then I decided, you know, one of the most screwed up things about this country is the fact that in order to do anything, <laughs> in order to cross the street, we always have to have a committee. <laughs> You know, and I said, you know, uh, and so I figured, well, screw the committee. We really only need one guy. And, 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 and now he's got to be smart enough to call either heads or tails. That's it. <laughs> and um, uh, 
So then I thought about, well, should I get the biggest guy on the team or the littlest guy on the team? And then I thought, well, <clears throat> Jamal Morrow was on The Price is Right and was fairly <laughs> lucky and went to the final round and almost won the sucker. And it was closest to the price, but he's over by he's over by like $3. The other person's under by like $60, but since he's over, he loses. And, and – um, and so I figure, well, Jamal Morrow's a lucky guy. Uh, <clears throat> plus, he's got pretty good energy to him and stuff like that. So why not Jamal Morrow? And so then Jamal Morrow goes out and did have an amazing knack for winning <laughs> the toss. <laughs> and then, I mean, wins it almost all the time. I mean, literally. Win, I mean, I'm serious about this. I don't know what his record is, but it's something incredible. <laughs> and then um, – <clears throat> But I don't even really care about that because one way or the other, you get the ball one half or the other, except one time when I played Nebraska. Oh, I'll tell you a story on that in a second. So hold on to your hat. And then um, um, so, uh, uh, so, uh, uh, so Morrow um, goes out there and he had a funny uh, tendency to win. Then I'm thinking – I don't want to sit here and think of and sort out a new guy to do it. So Jamal Morrow has gone out there for the coin to toss for about two and a half years and quite <laughs> honestly done um, a tremendous job in my opinion. Then we got on a roll, and so then I liked it even better. Yeah, it, it's all-timer. Um, Ryan, you found this one. or I had never – I guess Mike Leach used to do, like, local uh, TV appearances when he was down coaching in Lubbock. I think that it was the same kind of thing as when he was just kind of like, he just was enjoying. I think he, it's, I, I dug into this a little bit and it sounds like that at least on one occurrence, he just showed up. <laughs> like, it was yeah, yeah. like they, he had, they, he had started by doing some like ask the coach segment yeah. and then, and then he just showed up and showed interest in like the weather. <laughs> so it started as a gimmick. I, I don't know. It could be one of those things where he's just making fun of something overly simple, simplistic, but I mean, th this is uh, this is all time, Coach Leach, uh, doing the, and shout out to sh <laughs> shout the, out. you really need the video. I mean, you, <laughs> YouTube.com slash Sports Gambling Podcast. He's holding his book Geronimo that he's plugging, <laughs> and he's wearing just like a casual polo and cargo shorts <laughs> next to the weather guy who's in like a nice suit. And they're they're in front of the green screen. The visual too, so is so <laughs> strong, <laughs> right, and it starts fast. So ready to go. <laughs> Here's a message from the National Weather Service. <laughs> it's hot. In the studio tonight with me is Coach Mike Leach, who I guess you think you know a thing or two about weather. Coach, good evening. How are you doing? Well, I'm doing really good, and it's an honor to be here and uh, to do the weather with official equipment because uh, <laughs> generally I get up out of bed and uh, before I get dressed and I walk outside and I go like this and and uh, and uh, calculate a few degrees warmer since it's early in the day, and uh, mm -hmm. that's the weather report uh, that I have. And it's been really accurate up to this point, but uh, we'll see how it goes. <laughs> Pinpoint Doppler one basically means that we're going to be exact in this uh, weather forecast here, and it's going to be windy. But windy's not all bad because other teams that try to throw the ball don't practice in the wind that we do, so therefore we can pass. They won't be able to, so we like that. Now on Monday. It says bad stuff, serious storms. Well, you're going to be dead in 100 years anyway. Live dangerously. <laughs> I would go off. That's a amen. I mean, that's just too Hold strong, on. too much. It says. Sean, bad we're, we have to we have to pull this and make this a drop. Live dangerously. You're going to be dead in 100 years. <laughs> Live dangerously. I said something like this recently. Oh wait, hold on. We gotta, <laughs> there we go. Quick zoom in on his neck. Now on Monday, it says bad stuff, serious storms. Well. You're going to be dead in 100 years anyway. Live dangerously. <laughs> I would go opposite of that. I mean, that's just too strong, too much. I would go opposite of that. Is weather. a good job, and too. The, and and, the, and the, the, the thing on the screen there is just a little too sure of it for my taste. Uh, I, me, personally, expect sun. Go out there, expect sun, have a good the time. Ultimate contrarian. And, uh, if you run into the bad stuff, don't let that hamper your day. Don't not to pause it again, but that, like, look at the graphics they have for his air attack <laughs> weather report here. I mean, this is, this was not a, this was not a one-time thing. Stay out in it. Still enjoy the day. Got Don't be clouds, a coward. Uh, they have a sponsor. There. Who knows what they're going to do uh, or who knows hail. And I actually kind of look forward to hail. My favorite <laughs> weather pattern happens to be uh, when it rains mud, <laughs> dust comes through, 
Rain on top of it, it rains mud. Now, I know that people that have been here for a while don't like that particular ph phenomenon as well as I do, but think about it. How many times in your life are you actually going to see it rain mud? I love it. I go out there. I look at it. I watch it. Worst thing about it, you have to wash your car. Who cares? It's worth seeing. Trust me. This weather report here, what do I know? I'm a football coach. I suggest you go out and do what I do. Get out of bed. Go outside. Then you know. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, video definitely, uh, <laughs> definitely gold. Absolute fucking gold, man. Ooh. Dog, true dog. A uh, couple more clips here. I mean, <laughs> him getting, you know, like a lot of people who are funny. They when they get angry, they become funnier. And him, he's had a couple moments. I mean, what he. One of the viral videos of him when they almost blew that game this year, and he's he's taking his receivers' chairs and folding them up and <laughs> throwing them off to the side. He's cleaning up. Yeah, he he you know he's got a little. He'll get fired up, and um, yeah, this is this is one of his press conferences where he's super fired up. Oh, this is the original one, which is also classic. Is this is this? Not yeah, this I, is the OG. No, no, this is right though. You can play this one too. Yeah, this is yeah. good too. Okay, he's he's referred to it a couple times. It's his little catchphrase. As coaches, we failed to get through to him. As, as coaches, we failed uh, to make our coaching points and our points more compelling than their fat little girlfriends. Now, their fat little <laughs> girlfriends have some obvious advantages. For one thing, their fat little girlfriends are telling them what they want to hear, which is how great you are and how uh, how easy it's going to be and how, you know, uh, you know, we had, we had, you know, we had a whole bunch of people. Everybody wanted to win the football game, but nobody wanted to play the football game. Well, that, I mean, that defies every level of uh, work ethic that exists with regard to football. And uh, as coaches, we have to solve our failure on uh, on reaching them, and uh, the players have to listen. And I, I'm willing to go to uh, fairly amazing lengths to try to make that happen. I don't know if I'll be successful this week or not, but. But you know, I am going to try, and there will be some people inconvenienced. Uh, and if it happens to be their fat little girlfriends, too bad. <laughs> <laughs> there will be some people inconvenienced. One of my favorite stories. I know we don't have a clip for this. Was was uh, when you know he was talking about he was you know he used to walk home from from Wazoo three and yeah. a half miles every day, and he said one day in the snow he decided to follow some raccoon tracks. <laughs> And he, it, it led him a while to where a raccoon lived. And so he said he tracked a raccoon on the way home. Can you imagine you're just in your house in your backyard and like you see Mike Leach just walking through in the snow track tracking a coon. <laughs> tracking a coon. There's a part in the uh I don't know if we put a clip out about it or not, but I, where he's talking his pet. His pet ra he had a pet raccoon <laughs> and it uh his just his line about raccoons are naturally attracted to shiny objects. I was <laughs> laughing my ass oh, off. Oh man. Well, he grew up right by Yellowstone. I feel like that's got to be somewhat why he loves animals so much. He I feel like he's always talking to animals. How many different sound drops did did you see? Not I'm not talking about the mascots. Like, like I yeah. said, with the phone call with me, he was talking about the sharks in the Pacific Ocean, <laughs> off of Catalina and shit. He's I mean, explaining to me the difference of yeah. Anyway, the, no, the excitement of when he's talking about Ralphie, uh, the bison slash buffalo, <laughs> and, and like he's uh, he's perked up, like he's 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 ready to go. He's excited. <laughs> Uh, this next one, last one we got ready here for you. And again, go down a rabbit hole. Also check out his books. I mean, there's a, there's a ton to be learned S from him. Swing your sword is what swing the other your one, sword. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> and yeah, he's got a, he's got a ton of stuff up there. The, uh, I don't know if you can take the class anymore or if there's like a way to download the slides, but his uh, football and insurgent warfare, that class he taught it, I think he taught it at wazoo and Mississippi state. So maybe they'll post that online, but there's he really left uh, a ton of just like great wisdom, information, stories, and it's just all. It's just, I mean, a lot of it's really funny, and a lot of it makes you think, which is just a sign of a of a great guy. Um, this one, <laughs> this one again, it starts out as a football thing, but kind of evolves into something much bigger. This is him like frustrated with his uh, receivers keep dropping the ball. And I'm genuinely fearful that on our team, if, if, if me and the other coaches don't get them right, 
um, <clears throat> that about a generation from now, um, their kids and their grandkids won't have hands, you know, <laughs> because, um, you know, f- from a lack of use, those hands just disappear. <laughs> I mean, and, and maybe it'll be like this, like those dinosaur ends like this are, you see. And, and you know, you got like a Tyrannosaurus Rex who's clearly good at eating things, big old jaws and all that stuff, fairly athletic and run. Well, his hands are like this. And, and, you know, and I think we took a very, very, very uh, big step as a team, which we have to correct this. We have to correct this because... Um, you know, I think that uh, in the end that it's going to be best for all these guys uh, that they have good hand development and that they don't evolve to where they don't have hands. Okay, but we definitely um, didn't use ours, and so there certainly wasn't any genetic reinforcement on our part um, that we should maintain our hands. I mean, and I don't want all of a sudden... You know, a guy's driving across this country, and then they get to Starkville, Mississippi, and all of a sudden there's these athletic-looking, friendly guys, because we have great guys. They don't have any hands. And I hope that that's not the case. But that's where we're headed right now, and we're going to try to get that fixed in this off week. Oh, I, 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 hold jump. on. That I, really was a great closer. Was, uh, Let me. Uh, oh, we got a playlist going. Hold <laughs> that's on a fun. That's a fun one too. Uh, hold <laughs> on. Hold on. There's a shovel pass. I. I didn't. I don't. I'm, how did I not put this on the sheet? I. We got to play one more. Because it. Uh, and I don't know if if you guys have seen this one. I think I played it for Colby earlier. But but this. I mean, again, going back to the Lubbock days and the local television, like clearly ahead of their time in terms of realizing what they had with Mike Leach used them all the time. But this, this is uh, the premise of this one is, is it's like, uh-huh. an a, it's an ass, ask the coach bit. <laughs> yeah. And uh, yeah, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll let it, I'll let it run. And well, you, you should read it just in case okay. you're listening on audio. It's ask the coach Leach. It's will from Lubbock, Texas. I'm a freshman at Texas tech and I, I'm new to Lubbock. I've got a first date with a girl and I was wondering if you might have some recommendations. <laughs> Ahead of their time with this kind of content. <laughs> Will in Lubbock, Texas, he says, I'm a freshman at Texas Tech and I'm new to Lubbock. I've got a first date with a girl and I was wondering if you might have some recommendations. Well, uh, you want someplace casual to begin with because uh, you don't want something real formal in the beginning. So someplace casual, I recommend uh, Kegel Steakhouse, which is very casual. The other thing that's great about it is uh, is that there's very little salad there at Kegel, so then the, the, the girl will be forced to eat in front of you, which is something that women hate. But if you can make them do it, the earlier the better, the more that they'll, uh, you know, uh, conversate and let their, you know, let their, uh, uh, show their true self. And then... Uh, just... just. Uh, it's a simple question, <laughs> but it's never, it's never a simple answer with uh, Mike Leach. Uh, man, I mean, again, just uh, awesome. Thank you, Coach Leach, for all the time you spent on our show. It was really awesome. Everyone, do yourself a favor. Um, there's a ton of great stuff online. Uh, we have links to his old appearances in the episode description, so catch <laughs> up on those because they are um, they're really fun. And uh, again, feel lucky to to have known him and um, yeah, it's just uh, obviously sad and, and shout out to his, his family and yeah, people super close to him. Much love to his family. I know that, I mean, obviously the way that this thing went down and I know he's got kids and grandkids. So uh, yeah, yeah wishing, tough. wishing them the best and in our love and prayers over there. And uh, man, it sucks that it, you know, it just, uh, I feel I mean, like b- based on the outpouring of support, the, the Mississippi state covering the spread. Yeah. In the bowl game. Yeah. We'll get to the bowl game. Uh, hey, yeah. get the bowl challenge. Mike Leach. I'm sure he'd want the kids to play the game and uh, dominate. Cause he, he doesn't want them to live without hands. <laughs> that visual is so <laughs> great. Let's just call I'm I'm we'll be the first to say it, but the, the new college football playoff, let's call it the Mike Leach Mike Leach classic. And I saw, look, EA sports is bringing back the game. Uh, for college football, and I know obviously you oh, know put they, they're the putting cover. Madden oh, on yeah. the cover of Madden. They should put Coach oh, Leach yeah. on the front yes, of, of uh, college football, the NCAA game. So well, they, they have nothing it. to lose. They got to do it, man. Yeah. Nothing. They got to do it. Mike Leach, thank you for participating in the Sports Gambling Podcast. 
for the Sports Gambling Podcast. I'm Sean, second the money green, and he is Ryan. Oh, shout out to Leach. Kramer, let it ride.